Hello and welcome, it's Ruth here at Artful Stampin' and it's another Christmas Stampathon uh, today. It's the 25th of the month and we're here to challenge you to make four cards using some kind of Christmas creature on it. Now you can interpret that however you wish. I'm going to be using these really cute little birds from Classic Cloche. Uh, I've had the dies here as well, they're called the Cloche dies and you can purchase them as a bundle they're in the current mini catalogue that lasts till december and there's lots more you can do with this i am literally touching the tip of the iceberg with this stamp set and and dies um, i'm going to be using just very small elements of them so if you want to see how else you can use these do just get on google and type in classic cloche stamping up and i'm sure you'll come up with loads of ideas right the other thing i'm going to be using is the gorgeous uh, embossing folder it's called Time Worn Type and it's got a very kind of vintagey look to it plus it has some kind of little bits of writing hidden in there and it creates a really lovely texture onto which I'm going to be sticking some elements. So I pre-cut some branches, they come in the die set and they're very helpfully actually together on one kind of metal piece so that you can cut a few out at a time so you cut two at a time there. Then the bird's dies very helpfully sit on top of the two little birds that are on this stamp set here. So they match up beautifully. Now, if you wanted to colour in the birds, there are a couple of stamps that you can do that. But I'm actually going to be colouring these in myself because when I cut them out and then decided to use this lovely dark green, this is ever, evening evergreen background, I realised that these birds are going to look rather odd sitting um, on here with a white background to them. So I figured out a little way of getting around that. I did, I did do one. I, I've tested it out, but I can't find it. Uh, so there's two ways. I, either we can use a, a blend, blender pen. So this is a water-based pen. And we can use the Evening Evergreen ink pad. Actually, I've already squished it there. So if you don't know this technique, I'll just quickly show you. Squash your ink pad together very firmly. And you can then pick up the ink with the blender pen. And I'm going to colour just around the side of my little bird thereby hopefully disguising that white border that goes around him. So the other option is that you cut these out by hand. You could fussy cut these out, but it's up to you. But there was a little nifty kind of trick to get around that issue of the, the white border. So there we have it like that so i'm just going to do this other one but this time if if you haven't got an evening evergreen ink pad but you do have some other stamping blends so this is the alcohol pens i realized that uh, by doing a little bit of a mixture of evening evergreen no sorry this is not evening evergreen this is mossy meadow so i'm trying to achieve evening evergreen which is a dark green but it's got a slight bluey tinge to it. So there's a bit of evening evergreen and I'm just going to add a bit of Bermuda Bay over the top. And the reason I'm not doing all of it, I'm going to have a go seeing what it looks like if I do Bermuda Bay first and then evening evergreen on the top. So let's zoom in just a wee bit so that you can see what I'm doing. So there we go, colouring in right around the corner there. So sometimes us crafters, we have to, you know, use these nifty little tricks to get around problems. We don't always have absolutely everything to stock or in stock in our craft room. So we just have to kind of make do. And so, you know, it's worth encountering these problems sometimes just to figure out how to achieve. So there we go. So that's looking a little bit pale. So I'm just going to add a bit of bit more green around the mossy meadow around the edge of there and also don't forget these little the sides sections sorry what do I mean by that the edges that's what I mean 
don't forget the edges to colour those in. Right, so here we have a couple of wee branches. Now, I deliberately wanted to keep this card very simple just to show you that you can create very effective and beautiful cards without doing too much to it. And I was thinking of having red red birds, but I I think what I'm going to do is just have them slightly paler as if, I don't know, like they've been caught in a frost or something. So I'm going to colour these in with, like, this is pale or light Calypso coral here which I could add, I suppose, a little bit of light poppy parade. Let's see what that looks like if I just pop a little bit of poppy parade in there. And then blend that in a wee bit, just to make that a little bit more of a, a red breast. And then rather than going for the traditional kind of brown colour for the rest of the bird, I'm actually going to use, uh, this is dark petal pink, and just have a pale version so there's more of a contrast against that lovely evening evergreen that we have in the background it's a stylistic bird it's not meant to be realistic so there we go there we go see how they show up so beautifully right and then just keeping with the very sort of sim simplicity of this card i'm going to actually use some of the end pieces that I've got scrap bits that I've got spare and I'm going to stamp this lovely sentiment and it says warm warmth joy happiness and I'm going to stamp that with some whisper white ink now a tip with the whisper white ink is to dab 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 a few times don't push down too hard you just need to build up that ink onto your stamp I'm going to try and get this correct it's a bit hard when I'm not quite over it but and there we go. Try not to push down too hard because with these sentiment stamps, they've got some little narrow areas. And if you push down too hard, sometimes you can end up distorting. Sorry, I cut that off screen because I wanted to uh, fling it off. But um, there we go. So just very simple there. And then I'm going to stick that on there. Now I've decided what I want to have is a soft succulent background. Now, the reason I've got these other little bits and pieces hanging about is because I'm going to be, be making four of these. So if you head over to the Stampathon, Christmas Stampathon Facebook group, you can add your entries, your pictures of your creations with your Christmas creatures. And by showing us what you've created, you also enter a draw and there's some of us uh four of us taking part i think this month there's denise uh, sorry not denise um uh, ellen shirley esther and myself and so we'll be sending out a card to a lucky winner from a draw and you'll get this month's by entering this month's challenge you stand a chance oh it's so typical i've got glue running out you <laughs> You stand a chance at winning one of our cards. So do join in that. It's been lovely to see all your creations from last month's challenge, which was to create a home decor piece. So thank you, everybody, who's taken part in that. It's been really lovely to see. And as you can see, I'm being very careful with the amount of glue that I'm putting on, trying not to overdo it because... Uh, it's very easy to do. So I'm just spreading it out bit by bit there. So I just want this little twig, one to come in from one side and one to come in for the other so that I can pop my little birdies on there. Now you could use a dimensional to do this. Uh, for this one, I'm actually just gonna glue it, but with the others, I may pop a dimensional. I think when you're doing international posts, um, I'm a bit aware sometimes of perhaps not not doing too many layers because I tell you what the post office they don't need an excuse to put up the prices but there we go we are very blessed to live in an age where we can post things to each other fairly easily but they all comes with a cost so there we go right those are my two little birds 
Oh, you can see, see, that was my boo-boo one. <laughs> so that's my correct one. So I'm just going to add this now onto the front there. So again, quite a simple card for me, really. But sometimes I like to do them clean and simple. Nothing too, nothing too fiddly. But I cannot resist the odd little sequin. Let's pop, pop some, I don't know, it's like little bits of snow, maybe. Little snowfall coming down. I'm just going to pour a few out to make it a bit easier for myself to pick up some of these gorgeous sequins. Oh dear, why, why is that flipped over? Let's flip you back. Pop you there. There we go. Now come on, behave yourselves. You're on camera. I uh, need a little tiny one. So you just need your nail to kind of like prise it from the little tacky end on your pick, pick take your pick tool. I always want to call it the pick me up tool, but that no, that's got a whole other meaning, isn't it? But uh, you take your pick tool and um, it's super handy. There we go. Whoa, two more to go. Two more to go. Come on, you can do it. I'll pop them there. So, thank you so much for watching me today. If you like what you see, please do give me a thumbs up. And I'd love to see your creations with your Christmas critters or your Christmas animals on there. And uh, I hope to see you again next month. Take care for now. Bye.